So there become layers where Snake wants to put the explosives in places where Game & Watch thinks he can put it in his bucket, but it actually isn't safe and he gets ends up getting popped for it. Now, the second phase of the matchup, though, is when Game & Watch has a full bucket. Because at that point, there's no reason not to toss literally every yeah, explosive you, just, you have. You can just keep tossing them out, but you do have the fear of Game & Watch just letting out the bucket right. and letting out that explosive power behind it. Well, hmm. it, it does it, break it, so, the shield. So, so, is yeah. the grenade, so is the grenade absorptions actually still really strong? Yes. Okay. It, when, it, when they actually go off and explode. Okay, yeah. okay. Good. Um, well, actually, I mean, well, I meant you when you put, absorb it. Because yeah. I know like sometimes when Game & Watch buckets uh, certain moves, when he uses the like the oil pan from the bucket, it doesn't have a lot of knockback. So I'm assuming with the grenades, is it still pretty strong? Yes, yeah, because it, it the knockback of the bucket scales with what you bucket with it. Um, where I believe I know in previous games there's like a three times multiplier. I don't think it's that high in this one. Um, but the general rule of thumb is if you bucket things that do almost like 10% three times, you're gonna kill them with it. But if you bucket like 2% things, it's not gonna be that strong. Um, the other the last thing is of course when you don't have when you have a full bucket you lose access to reflecting. And that becomes a really big deal when you're dealing with the mortar and we're dealing, especially with Nikita off stage. So getting rid of a full bucket actually becomes important for Game & Watch because he's not going to be able to navigate the Right out. on cue, yep. G-Pig. As you were talking about this bucket, Meister saw the grenade and pulled it out. And Shogun tossed the grenade the opposite way, yep. right? Yeah, like he's, that, not, he's not messing with that. It, it really does establish with the, the core beating well, heart of the Shogun's match. already playing with out really a lot of projectiles right now. Yep. He's really using a lot of the normals that Snake possesses. I don't see a C4, I don't see anything. He's just trying to land very honestly. And here's the thing though, and this is the, the dichotomy of the matchup. Snake with only normals has a really hard time against Game & Watch. Game & Watch still has those disjoints. He still has up at a shield. He can navigate these situations really well. Having a little bit of explosive pressure is so important for that extra little bit of edge. The beautiful catch! Straight in the air, didn't even land. I will say what I did like from Shogun is the fact that he up tilted the down air yeah. attempt at a Meister. He was like, oh, you're not landing for free, and you're not going to be abusing this against me. I have to play with Zach Ray against this character. <laughs> I, I, I know a little bit what you can do. Shogun just building up that space, walking backwards. Again, so good in terms of mentality to have against Game & Watch. Game & Watch thrives off of you coming to him. Up yet a shield is meaningless if he's the one running at you. 40 through 57 after the dash attack as well. Shogun just really showing what Snake can do outside of just, you know, putting up the projectile wall. Yeah, he's actually get finding a lot of success playing around the neutral with just his fists and his uh, feet. C2C at the air, end of the day. C4s lost somewhere in there. Don't even know where it is. Forward smash. Oh, barely alive. Incredible DI by Shogun. Oh my, he that C4 almost sticking onto Game Watch's head. <laughs> Shogun knows this matchup. Shogun he knows, knows he like, definitely knows the matchup. And not afraid of the bomb whatsoever. You, you should never be. The no. moment you see Game Watch toss that out, that bomb goes off in like 25 frames. Yep. And Shogun, the moment he saw it, here's time for an up tilt. It will even last longer because it hits the bomb. Yeah, no, the, the bomb doesn't explode unless it hits the ground. If it's in the air, like you said, it takes 25 frames for it to even go off. Mm -hmm. This is clearly, like, Shogun is definitely playing with a lot of experience in the matchup itself. Like, this is not, this is not his first rodeo. Yeah, up air, not going to connect either. He's just back air, just so active. And Meister continuously just running into it over and over. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Oh! Trying to punish the up tilt, doesn't get it though. Meister finds himself the fr uh, the second stock. But look at that, so much knockback just off that uh, up tilt. Next yeah. up tilt can potentially kill. No, I mean, the next one definitely will. I'm actually surprised that we didn't see an F tilt in that situation. Yeah, I, I think it has to do with the startup that uh, Shogun wanted the faster one. Oh, taking all the bacon straight to the face, sitting at 44 52. Uh oh. Shogun opting spot. to try to uh, be out of the whole corner pressure, but instead he's just getting caught in the other corner entirely. Back here's not going to do it, and Shogun just getting rid of all of his explosives and challenging the neutral get up down smash. That's one of Meister's favorite tricks. Shogun totally awake to it, though, having complete confidence in the episode. And the funny thing is, the other favorite option for Meister to get from the ledge is double jump Nair, right? Rising with it, and the up tilt is so huge, that might have potentially traded with that as well. Yeah, I mean, if it didn't even trade with it, it would catch Meister while he's jumping up. So no. As Shogun. you can see, Sh Shogun 
done very his aware yeah. of this character. This is knows what he can do. You know, typically we do see Meister taking advantage of the fact that he can just upbeat out of shield onto like everything, can abuse those bombs, and most people respecting it way too much. Shogun's just having none of it. He's not even respecting the nares. Like I got dashes like my front half of my body's basically invincible. Mm -hmm. His use of a down tilt is actually very interesting as well because it's it's kind of catching Game & Watch in the air, or at the start of his jump as well. Mm -hmm. There we go, though. The Nair catching Shogun, attempting to approach with the down air. We have the other juggle, but Shogun is so good at weaving around these tornadoes. Just making it back down and just getting these little hits, and these hits worth so much on Game & Watch because he's such a light character. Okay, that was, that was sick. That was sick from Shogun. Bobbing and weaving against all of those bacons and projectiles from the chef, and still able to come out basically scot free. I mean, until he's on the sledge, but nonetheless, to have the awareness to make sure not taking any unnecessary damage, you really know he is on one right now. Oh my gosh, that was trying to use the C4 to catch the uh, the roll back. Shogun trying to cover a lot of options, but like you say, it's almost like Shogun's playing like the slowest ship possible in a bullet hell game, and somehow weaving past everything all the same. Look, if you understand the angles, if you understand the speeds of which everything's coming after you, you're going to be completely fine. Mm -hmm. oh, but Meister heading an answer now. He's 39%. He's, and he's still just waiting for the C4. Not afraid of it. Because, I mean, what we're seeing with Meister and finding these openings is he's kind of waiting for uh, Shogun to slightly dash in a little bit too close, and then he just bursts in with a short hop there to catch him right near the ground. Yeah, but the up tilt hatching, Meister landing yet again. And the up tilt, just such a strong option. He's hitting you in the ground, in the air. You can go ahead and challenge that town air as well from Game & Watch. Kind of does a little bit of everything for, for Snake. <laughs> that, yeah, the, just barely outranging a little bit of everything that Meister has on the ground. And we've seen how dangerous the air game is. Yeah, yeah, up tilting in the wrong direction. Not sure what Shogun was looking for in that last interaction. Rolling past the up tilt. And able to get an F tilt himself. Yeah, just punishing the shield drop there. I think Meister wasn't expecting that much of a delay for the punish attempt. Shogun again, going to the skies. Of course, he's going to put up the shield. It's kind of like bait, too, to toss out like a C4 in those situations. It's like when you're getting mugged and you throw your wallet, and you just hope that they just leave you alone. <laughs> because it wouldn't even fill up the bucket entirely, right? Man, just take it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to connect this time around. There goes the chair. Still not enough. Wow, he's still defending his falling every time with these C4s. Meister, so fortunate there. That Uppy was able to clip Shogun. Shogun was primed and ready to go ahead and try to catch him with something. But so many explosions off of all those forwarders. Snake getting you know a little taste of his own medicine. Mm. Great weight by, by Meister, just recognizes the air dodge, tossing out a down tilt and getting himself the fastest punish that will kill. Other than that though, Shogun's still having a fantastic position. We're at, yep, that dead percent. Down tilt to up air is gonna do it. He didn't, look didn't he, he didn't allow the, the down air, he didn't allow him the forward air. He was just like, you know what, you can't hit anything here that I am afraid of. Even if I trade with your down air, you're coming to me. You're coming to my legs. Mm -hmm. You're gonna die. It's a featherweight, man. Oh, well, man. maybe not the proper featherweight like Peachy, no, no, but no, still no, no, no. absolutely, I mean, he's, absurdly he's, he's, light. He's a, he's a tad above Peachy. And probably Jigs. Yes, he's, a, yeah, he's yeah. above Peachy and Jigs. Okay. Yeah. Good you are correct. Good to know. Yeah. Oh, man. Right. Shogun up 2-0 against Meister. It's so interesting, especially in this matchup, because right now the common notion is that Game & Watch beats Snake. But it really uh, Shogun really showing that the issue isn't that the matchup is inherently rigged against Snake. It's that Snake needs to play it so differently. It's an obtuse matchup. Well, but if you Shogun play to is the strengths playing you still have, his you can own win. Snake. Yeah. He is playing Shogun. He's not playing the character right now. Typically, you would see a lot of the grenades and whatnot. He's not even, he's eliminating that whole thing. He doesn't want to mess with the bucket. And more importantly, he wants to be himself. He's like, all right, this is cool. I'm going to take advantage of the down tilt that I have. I'm going to take advantage of all my normals that actually outrange Game & Watch. You see that? They're running back against the, the Nairs and the fact that the down tilt will catch further than the reach of the fish with the Nairs, making it such a good whiff punish. Okay, finally, up, he had a shield. Going to connect into Shogun. Meister has him in the air, now sitting at 85%. Ooh, beautiful catch on the air dodge. 
Just, just like that, 96 damage. Mice are getting insane value for that. I'm opening. sorry, I just can't get over these down tilts. <laughs> oh, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's dead, of course, but... It, the range that Snake has on his down tilt is actually very deceptive. It looks like it should only be his foot, but it looks as if it goes a tad bit further. And it's it's so much safer than all his other tilts as well, especially if you can get just the very tip of it. Trying to look for that downer, not going to connect. He hits a little bit on the shield, but Meister with that up B, able to just go right through the other hits. Mm -hmm. Just really wants Shogun to get in his face so he can pop him in the air again and start another juggle. But Shogun catching him, dropping shield, evening the stock count, but still at 85 and kind of forced to take to the skies to get away from Game & Watch. All right, 105, gonna go high yet again. Not trying to get less trapped by this game and watch. Connecting C4 to the neutraler, 43% immediately. Ooh, great out of shield option coming up from Shogun. Yep, nothing game and watch does while he's landing is perfectly safe. Especially if you're not spacing it. Yeah, I think really the threat that you have to worry about against Game Watch is that he's gonna go cross your shield. He's gonna go onto the opposite side, or he's gonna immediately try to do the upbeat. Shogun just did it again, ran up to Meister's neutral getup, completely unafraid of his favorite option, just hitting him in the face and killing him. Yeah, he, he's not afraid of down smash whatsoever. He just ran up and dash attacked this time around, too. Okay, Meister getting the longest punish, the up smash out of uh, shield, but having so much time because of these approaching down airs that Shogun is doing. And that's kind of where Meister's been finding his openings, is Shogun's playing a little bit more aggressively as opposed to uh, baiting in this game. It might be partly that Meister's approaching less as well. At being forced Shogun has the, uh, seen, seen, the, seen, the, seen the floor for like 20 seconds. Now he's hitting <laughs> it 86% already, 95. The damage is still racking up, G-Pick. Yeah. And Meister's just letting these down airs come to his shield and taking these three pop-ups. Yet again, 134 on Shogun now. That, the cheeky up smash to the forward tilt, a Game of Watch staple for years. Yeah, I think really the, the biggest thing that we haven't seen from Meister is just no back airs. I've seen, we've oh. seen basically every aerial but that. No, we've seen a little bit of it. It's just he hasn't been able to find a safe spacing to do it against Shogun. Shogun's punished it on his block. Actually, does it even beat Cypher? More importantly, I don't think it does. I'm not sure entirely. Oh, no, it doesn't beat Cypher. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, 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 yeah no, just, okay. I, that that I, would make so much more sense why it's yeah. not coming up. Dash is not going to connect and get that stock. Meister on the board. For some reason, I thought you said Nikita. But uh, yeah, no, it doesn't beat Cypher. Uh, <laughs> Cypher is actually really hard for Game & Watch to break through. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have, like, forward air is a strong enough hit, but it takes so long to come out. Um, your kind of best shot is down air, but Snake's going to be recovering high, so you can't line up the down air. Oh, it complete sense. Yeah. And there we have Meister able to get a game. And we're on Shogun's counter pick now. Really just mulling it over. What are you feeling, my man? What are you feeling? PS2? Okay. A lot of stage to work with, especially if you're going to be trying to, you know, backdash, down tilt, yeah. a little bit more of the neutral. I think the big thing, Shogun going Fox. Okay. Wait. Um. Oh, I know. I know Shogun used Fox in Smash Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just haven't seen it come out in this game. Uh, Fox is actually not a bad choice against Game Watch. It really depends a lot more the tempo that you're playing as Fox. Yeah. Like I mean, I mean, I mean, most Fox may say that they really struggle in this matchup, but with a player like Shogun that understands his matchup, this could really go in his favor. It, it just really matters whether or not he's going to just be jumping into Game & Watch a lot, right? Like, if you respect Game & Watch's space um, and, like, try to play a very patient runaway game, I could see this actually not being a complete disaster. But the other thing that makes it really hard is the edge guard that Game & Watch has on Fox is absolutely devastating. That was so. actually really nice coming off from Meister. The landing neutral are getting the first couple of hits, leading up to another punish. Caught. No, nowhere to really go there. Sending Meister to the skies, and what is he doing? <laughs> what was that? Why, why Firefox there? What? Maybe to catch the down air? Like the first couple hitboxes off the Firefox can go ahead and clank with it and then outright win? I don't know. It's the only thing I can think of, G-Pick. I'm, I'm trying to reach for Shogun here. Yeah, you're, you're reaching, man. I don't know. That's... A very strange play, and now uh, Shogun not, uh, getting lapped by uh, Meister and still stuck over his head. All right. 
Then goes the up air, the up smash, gonna get that stock. Shogun only sitting at 46% in a very good spot. But the puff of air coming from the up air, just getting him out of that illusion. Wow. Just barely. How do, you, how do you get him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, patiently, right? Yeah, like, yeah. No, so sometimes when, when you just see a Game & Watch going over and over with these up Bs, with these spot dodges, it's just like, all right, you, you can have this one. I'm not even going to try to get you. Just, yeah, you just got to wait for your opening, right? Like, taking immediately what looks like the first offering is always a bait for Game & Watch. Okay, down there, just getting rid of the bomb. He's going to go for a grab. He tried to, but again, an up B immediately after that down air. Ooh. Still gonna be holding on. The Knights are having the ledge trap right now. Piling on that ever been more damage. At this Shogun's point, these so kills fearless. are gonna be killing. I can't believe he's actually trying to land Benutular on the Gamer Watch, especially off stage. It's sitting at 135. Well, no, that, that right there was a bait me, though. He jumped above Meister and then retreated, getting Meister to up out of shield. I think he's trying to get Meister to up prematurely and catch landings like he did with that up smash against the Dare. Definitely see it. We have Meister sitting at 78 coming up. Town throw neutral air up or 32 already racked up onto Shogun. Yeah, but now you can clearly see that Meister you know, in tune with this matchup now. He's, yeah. Like he, he sees that well, as opposed to the snake, he can go with a lot more of these upbeats. He can be a little more aggressive. He can go around that shield and yeah, I, I saw that forward smash. The forward smash is <laughs> out, outright destroying that Nair <laughs> from the ledge. Shogun's still in such a tough spot, though. Like, he's he's able to find these kills in these uh, spots that ordinarily Meister feels so comfortable throwing out hitboxes, but he's absolutely going to die to that forward smash there. No way you're surviving. But, yeah, it, when it comes down to it, though, he spent so much of his time juggled, so much of his own time just trying to get back to the ground that finding those little moments for, like, the faster kills than he could find with Snake isn't doing enough to mitigate that damage from the juggles. All right, good. Coming up, we're going to yet another Game 5. Both these players battling for their tournament life now. Yeah. This is loser's bracket. All on the next pick. It is still Shogun's choice for where I, they end up. I think he's going back to the snake. I, I honestly, I think the thing that cost him in the snake uh, pick for Game 3 is honestly he just jumped and down aired Meister's shield, like a lot. Well, he, he was expecting to be able to try to punish him. I think in a lot of the situations, now he's learned what Meister is going to be doing. Just back off and disengage. Or, or maybe try to go for another safer option. But, you know, outside of that, I don't think really think Snake has one out of shield. Has what out of shield? Has anything to really do out of shield to try to catch his opponent. I, I mean, he, he managed to catch with, like, uh, an up tilt, a down air at no, one right. point. And, like, yeah. Especially if he gets like the parries lined up or just going straight up for the trades yeah. as well, which he's also done in the, I believe it was like in the first game, trading with the down air. One, All right, here go. we go. Game yep. five on Town and City. Here comes the snake. Meister showing a little bit less fear, going in immediately for a dash attack. Recognizing that Shogun is content to literally just exist on the other side of the stage. And Shogun immediately just taking to the sky to get out of disadvantage. As long as yet to land a hit. It shouldn't take too long as it's looking at now. And wow, that was the first grenade we've seen in, like, I think, like three games. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that by Shogun only tossing out a down tilt as his attempt to uh, to punish the up tilt. Nothing, nothing too committal in case he doesn't have the frame data right. And dash attack is completely beating out that neutral air. I love that bait, right? Just running back to make uh, Meister think he can go in with an attack and stuffing it immediately with a dash attack. He's playing dash back the game at yeah. the moment. He is just allowing Meister to hit that first button. And he just wants to get those whiff punishes. The, the danger of that, though, is that Meister can also just keep dashing forward and let Shogun corner himself. Some big damage coming up. We were stuck in the air against Game & Watch. There's not much you can really do about it. Ooh, that pressure. Yeah, that's the thing. Shogun got caught in his shield instead of challenging the bomb, ended up eating a dangerous block string. No fear. That move has no invincibility nope. until attacked <laughs> Which is like frame 20. Like, you can challenge it. Yeah, I think the only one you really got to be afraid of is down smash. But even then, it's not frame 1 invincibility. Down smash doesn't have invincibility. It's just that huge? Yeah, it's just that huge. <laughs> oh, man. All right, down tilt again coming through. Shogun trying to set up these back airs possibly. No, he's looking for that up tilt. Barely off the mark. He only got a single jab. Oh, my gosh. And, and whiffing at that. Yeah. But Meister ready to pounce on that moment. Oh, the Nair being able to beat out that uh, uh, Nair. I think Shogun was expecting like a neutral getup or a yeah. jump instead of just the. And this is the first time that he, that he came up with a neutral instead of just immediately looking for that up tilt. 
Mm. He challenged that neutral air earlier with uh, the Fox Sword Smash, so. Oh, oh. Uh, all right. That was uh, DI. Get off my stage. Snake has a kill throw now, yo. <laughs> so I imagine he disengage and not getting ahead of himself, just taking that victory of not bleeding anymore. Yeah, the neutral are gonna get punished big. Just completely whiffing on Meister. Mm -hmm. Shogun now setting at 103, 111 after the dash attack. Still stuck in the air. Can he land down? He finally does, but let's see what he can go ahead and do. Gets clipped by the forward air explosion. <laughs> Meister so badly wants uh, Shogun to set off the C4. Shogun just waits for the C4 to be alone before he uh, detonates it. He really wants the C4 to be like in his pocket so he can be reversed with it when he lands. Yeah, more simply just use it as a as a tool to get in front of Meister, forcing him to put up that shield and get away from him. Treating the platform, going back to the skies, trying to find his way down. Finally does. It's the block. Yeah, the wall of bonds coming out, and Shogun not challenging it, surprisingly. He challenged it so well in the first game, it's weird to see him respect it so much. Yeah, but I mean, with, with him now sitting oh. at about 200 percent yeah. Getting hit by the up air is gonna lose that stock, but with him sitting all the way in the corner and at 200%, I don't. I feel like he is a little afraid, just because one errant move, he's eating the explosion to the face. Oh, I mean, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, yeah. At a certain point, you gotta Whoa! take a risk. Oh, there we go, getting it until the C4 essentially like a command grab, but the C4 changes bodies. It's on Snake now. Was he, <laughs> was he trying to pick up the grenade? Yeah, he was trying to pick it up. Oh, I think throw it out, if I'm not mistaken, but you know, he's just gonna keep running around. That dash attack going all the way up there, the puff of air barely missing. Meister overall looking in so much control here. Especially now that he has the lead, he doesn't really need to make any of those risks. And yeah, not enough percent on Game Watch to guarantee that up tilt right after the down throw. Yeah, he maybe needs one more pummel, if anything. I, I think it still needed like a solid 20, 30 more. And even then, even the tactics that Shogun was using in, in, in the beginning, trying to use the up tilt to try to just challenge that down air, is really not going in his favor right now. Meister is actually mixing up the timing of which he's doing it. He's not hitting it immediately. He's letting himself drop down first and then letting it rip. <laughs> trying to get just the legs. Ooh, interesting. Getting a trip but not getting the chase right afterwards. Shogun is in such a tight bind, too, though. He can't really afford to get hit by any of these bombs. And sure enough, one of them connects. Not enough to kill. And Meister just kind of knows how much Shogun is respecting that forward air now. He's just tossing it out liberally whenever they're on the same playing field. Uh, forward tilt, able to go ahead and get that stock. Shogun sitting at 147. He's forced to go ahead and recover low. Not a good spot for Snake, but now he does land back onto the stage. Meister expecting the C4 to go off. Shogun Ooh. ain't doing it. Shogun just trying to oh, jump no. over. No. Not gonna find the punch. Still alive? He's okay. It was basically the lasting hitbox on the chair. Now he's starting to just get comfortable. I, I guess when you're at 160. Oh, there we go. The last bomb doing the trick, blowing up Shogun's back and sending him off stage. It was interesting that Shogun started bringing out the grenades at the very end there, but I think he just he, rationalized. He had nothing to lose. He was like, you know what? I'm everything gonna make else, it happen. Everything else kills me in one hit anyway. Like, who cares <laughs> if I give you a bucket? Yeah. <laughs> It's like, I'm not dying early anymore. If you hit me, you hit me. Yeah. <laughs> what happens, happens. But not able to quite close that out. And kind of so surprising to me to see the shift in Shogun's gameplay at the very end there, right? Like, we had walls of forward airs when we had earlier seen him just outright call it out, just jump out and kick uh, Meister Either in the face. Either kick him straight out, he would go with the down tilt, or he would just go completely over it. Yeah. But, you know, it's just the fear or, or something just kind of set in where Meister just completely just took advantage of Shogun, just, you know, took his foot off the gas pedal a little bit. I mean, I think that was a really big part of it. Meister was playing so aggressively in the very first few games, and that let Shogun have a lot more of that defensive mindset of, I'm just going to bait you, let you try to jump there at me, let you try to come at me from the air. Because, um, you know, what makes Game Watch Watch so frustrating to play, especially is his defensive tools. If he can get you to be the one to come to him, it becomes such a nightmare to find out, like, when, when do I actually get him unsafely like when when does he not have that ejector seat of an up b to get out of here <laughs> yeah i mean it's not 